we are at Urbana Flea Market. It's been a while since I've been to this flea market, but I used to come when I was little. So we are on the mission today to find stuff for my studio. Antiques, antiques, clothing, stuff like that. It's day one of a two-day antiquing excursion. Our first purchase of the day. Cute little creamer junk. It's got a little chip. It's cute though, it's cute. Oh, it's cute. Nice hats, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Fill the bag for five dollars. Fill the bag for five dollars. And we filled the bag for five dollars. Ooh, ponies. And you're gonna be charming. I'm, I'm gonna work on being charming. Instead of being Abby. I'm not <laughs> I'm going to interrupt this antique shopping spree of a video to uh, tell you a little bit about the sponsor of today's video, Likewise App. Now, I've worked with Likewise before. They are a fantastic, 100% free, easy to sign up app that helps you find new content to consume, whether it's books, movies, TV, podcasts, what have you. It also has like this super delightful like social aspect to it. So you can follow other people, see what they're reading, see what they're watching. I'm on Likewise. You can follow me here see what I've been up to recently when it comes to you all don't want to actually know my, my reading habits they're they're a little bit embarrassing but my TV watching habits are very respectful mostly because the guy next to me that you can't see who's driving right now he has excellent taste in TV he also is a user of the likewise app aren't you baby mm-hmm mm -hmm. yep is this your YouTube channel now no it's not just based off of algorithm but it's also based off of your experience let's say that you're really into like the Akatar series like A Court of Thorns and Roses and you finish the series and then you feel really kind of dead inside because you know and you're like I want to read more like that well you could just go on to likewise apps you know rank it and get an idea of what kind of other fantasy options are out there based off of your enjoyment of Akatar but I am ready to get hurt again it does a lot of the work for you is basically what I'm getting ready to say if you want to give likewise app a try go ahead and use the link in my description download the app sign up for free it is completely free app there's no money involved it's just it's just not they just want you guys to know about it because it's, it's a really cool way to you know find your latest favorite TV show or find your latest your favorite your latest favorite you even grammar bro so if you want to find your new favorite book tv show or movie go ahead to my download the likewise app in the description below and give it a shot and don't forget to follow me if you want to thanks again to likewise for sponsoring this video <laughs> so what do you think of urbana me yeah oh uh, it was very nostalgic i was surprised how much how disappointing the inside was but it wasn't bad. No, I, I think mean, we it, got some good stuff. We got some. That know, fill a plastic bag with whatever you can fit for $5 was a winner. If I don't find something right yeah. away, it, I know it's going to be a bad flea market. So for us to hit that booth yeah. first, mm -hmm. I knew it was going to be good. Antique Village. Oh, I thought it was me. It's on the price. Go right ahead. TikTok we're videoing. <laughs> Nostalgia. What did we just find, Mom? We just found the yearbook <laughs> when I was in um, seventh grade. Oh, there he is. The girls who girl, girl. So it is the end of day one. Tomorrow we wake up at five thirty in the morning to get to the Tri-State Antique Fair, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. But we have the river view, and it's. I mean, I know like the Ohio River has like 50 foot long catfish and dead bodies and probably nuclear sludge at the bottom of it, but it's a pretty river when it wants to be. Oh, there was a bird right there. We are waking up with a butt crack. So that way we can find treasures because we are treasure hunters, just like Nicolas Cage. I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. That's really unnecessary. It's 5.40 in the morning and we're here to buy some antique clothes. And I'm tired, but I will cut someone for a good garment if there is out there. So I'm just being real with you guys. This is my morning voice. This is what we sound like. I sound like I've been smoking for 50 years. I don't have any pants on, but I slept good. And I'm gonna waddle my ass out to that fairgrounds and I'm gonna find some sweet deals, hopefully. Cause if not, I'm gonna be really grumpy. <laughs> we forgot to go to the ATM again. It's a little cutthroat. Yeah. But it's fun. Yeah. 
but you need cash. Okay. A lot of cash. And we still don't know for certain if there's an ATM around here or not. Yeah. So we've PayPal'd, we've written checks because someone remembered a checkbook. <laughs> this millennial does not do that. We're officially done, so we're gonna head back and it's gonna be a long haul, baby. Friendly vendors, too. Really friendly. Everyone knew each other. All, All right. right, guys, we're gonna drive. We're driving. I'm putting the shades back on. Bye. Bye. I feel like this is like Antiquer's Christmas because I, I was like, how am I gonna do this haul video where like the light is good and like I can kind of get everything in the shot and I realized I had to sit on the floor like a child at Christmas. Anyways, here's my haul. Now we're gonna unpack it all to start this nice pink and blue cream wool rug we got this now i'm gonna pop my butt on it hello good day good morrow my filming studio it needs to be decorated i went to the to this on this trip with kind of that in mind we're doing the big project where we're building an entire late 19 teens wardrobe for the trip in october so also looking for things to help with that i like mirrors so found this mirror this was at the antique village it is 1880s what i love about it is that it has little sunflowers on it and it made me think of the history of aestheticism video that i did with robin and we talked about how sunflowers were like a, a signifier of the aesthetic movement when i saw the little sunflowers i was like oh i have to have that because it's aesthetic the other mirror here this it's actually pretty heavy this was only 15 bucks who's gonna say no to a 15 dollars massive heavy sort of gilded oldie timey mirror. This is not antique in a true sense. This is plastic, but it's so rococo y If it's not baroque, don't fix it. Look at this with the bow and like the, the gold. I think it's from 2020. Anyway, so here we go. I got this. It's cute. This is going in the studio too, just decorative stuff. Now for the little bits. Decorative objects for the studio. The studio is probably gonna be painted a light matte, slightly desaturated blue. And I wanted porcelain and ceramics that would really pop against that. So I got just some decorative vases and ceramics. We found this teapot. I was really going like to pink flowers and gilding. There's a, there's a theme here. It's a genre. Not everybody fits on the Rasta. So we got this little like creamer. Again, do you guys see the theme here? So I thought she was really pretty. I really love the pinks and the reds. Loved this just glass decanter without the top. So this is just a little antique powder jar, like pomade looking jar. So something to go on a toilet table, which I haven't even shown you guys yet, but mm, I got a really good thing the other day. So she's not as bright and she's a little bit newer with like transfer wear, but Pretty purple roses. <laughs> I don't, I was just grabbing stuff. I wasn't even like paying attention to what I was grabbing at, at, after a certain point. These are separated sequins in their original like vintage packaging. I have no idea how many there are in here, but I grabbed them. I have some glass beads. We have some vintage hooks and eyes. I love vintage hooks and eyes. Apparently I grabbed bright yellow Bias cotton hem facing. I don't know why, don't ask me why. Sewing machine attachments, because you never know. Looks like drugs. And then I grabbed this, because it's a little curling iron. Little, really tiny, tiny ass, itty bitty curling iron. I got a chamber pot. It's pretty. See, she has roses on it. And she's chipped because she was used. I think in the new studio, we're gonna play a game called Find the Chamber Pot. So at Tri-State, there was a lot more sewing and craft and textiles and antique boots and things with like four things for a dollar. And, and so this place, uh, this guy, he actually goes to Locust Grove's antique fair too, but he actually had some vintage fabric. But this ribbon is really, really nice rayon and it was a dollar. <laughs> They say it's polished cotton. It has a, maybe a touch of a glaze on it, but I just thought it was really cute. There is a, a uh, gift in here that I will not be showing you guys because it's for someone you all know. And then there's a spider. I got celluloid hair collector because your girl sheds and I figure why not just go full, full weirdo and just start collecting my hair in the celluloid hair collector so that way I can make my own rats. 
for historic hairstyles. So this one was in really good condition, it was five bucks. Hair combs were on my list because having a bunch of hair combs is, is a really good idea. And doing the 1916 thing, when you look at hair stuff, they were using a lot of, of like horn and celluloid combs. So I got actually, this one was basically free because I had bought a lot of jewelry from her name's Lisa. I got tons and tons of like vintage lace. This is like just cotton crochet lace. It's not like, 100% cotton, it's probably like 50s and 60s stuff. Moving on, jewelry. She's missing some rhinestones, but this is a great deco hairpin. Super simple, basic, everyday sort of hair combs. She's much older. She was more expensive than I wanted to, but I loved the paste and the fact that this moved. So this booth was at Tri-State, and this lady just had like fruit boxes, like produce boxes and it was just full of stuff and you just rummaged. I got like all this I think for like 65, which is a little bit more expensive, but it's all bone and ivory stuff. I don't know what these are. They almost look like they're perfume, but they're completely hollow on the inside. They're beautiful, they're ornate, they're intricate, they're engraved. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular. We think this might be for perfume. It it opens and it has like a little dauber, so it's like, you know, oil or something. This is a little manicure thing, so it's a cuticle pusher and then like a nail cleaner. A little tiny fork. I got a hem marker and this was made in Dayton and it looks like it's like never been used and it's obviously, yeah, made in Dayton. Um, and I was like, oh, I don't have one of these. This is cute. Next up is art. You guys have seen my gallery wall. I, I have a lot of fashion plates and prints. I've started to kind of get a little saturated with them. I'm not as interested in collecting them like I used to be. I used to be like the moment I saw one, I would grab it. It didn't matter. But I feel like I have enough now that I'm kind of like, eh. So this is very early. This is 1871. It's a Godie's. It's obviously been hand colored and I really liked the green, the purple, the red. I thought it was just a really good pop of color. Obviously she needs to be framed. At Urbana, there was this lady and I really liked her booth. She had a bunch of like fashion stuff, but she had these photographs from like the late teens and 20s that are just really cool for like fashion photography. So I just grabbed all of them. She gave me a deal on buying like the whole lot instead of just buying one. So we kept them like all together. And like, this is great. This one, she's, she's in a, like a swimsuit and she's posing in front of a backdrop to look like she's like at the beach. I just loved it. I thought it was great. This one was at the antique mall. I grabbed it because it's 18, late 20s evening wear. Fall dress and evening dress, 1833. And I have a few 1830s prints, but I don't have a lot. And obviously this one being colored and it was a really good price. I was like, yeah, I'll take that. So we're gonna get these reframed and rematted, but we loved them just kind of genre uh, prints and scenes, obviously 1860s. And it's from the illustrator Pierre Brisson. And he did these in 1934. I don't think these are originals. I think these are reprints. But if you Google him, he did like beautiful fashion illustrations and like genre illustrations of like the upper middle class. And his work was in like Harper's Bazaar and Vogue. I really, really like his style, his line work, all of it. I found, this is awesome, this is a good find. I found this pattern, it was a dollar. I think it actually might be complete. There, is, It has been opened. It has probably definitely been cut, maybe not. But it has a pin in the back and the pin is vintage, it's antique, but it's a 1930s pattern and it's a 42 inch bust, guys. 15 cents and I got it for a dollar. I think that's a good good exchange. Carolyn was this woman's name. She gave me this as just a little baby bonnet. She was like, you like old stuff, so here. She was very nice. The magazine game wasn't that good, but I did find some, some okay stuff, some good stuff. My most favorite is this October 1910 Ladies Home Journal. I love Ladies Home Journal. They are full of shade and salt and spice, uh, but it's the American fashion number. So the whole edition is actually devoted to American fashion. And so the illustrations are fantastic. The condition is wonderful. It's it's great. And it has the original, the address label for Mrs. Hannah Fraser, rural number seven to 11. So somewhere out in Ohio. Her other one, marriage edition, which has fashion in it too, but it also has a lot of like home decor like ideas and they're like, how to like update your home and things you did wrong in your bedroom for decoration and this is how we'll fix it. So it's perfect. And I was like, oh, I, I love the idea of some Edwardian like home decor uh, information. So I got those. This one is a ladies home journal from 1940, June 1932 Cosmopolitan. I doubt it has the same kind of content that Cosmo has today. That is not how you stitch. Who illustrated these? Just so we're clear, this is not how you sew. That's 
all the small stuff. Now it's the stuff behind me. Again, we're doing 19 teens for the trip in October. I have to make a whole wardrobe and I love 1916. So I've been doing a lot of reading in Vogue and Ladies Home Journal and I was able to find some really great articles about the petticoats that women were wearing in 1916 to give them the fashionable shape because they were wearing hoops actually very briefly for that bell skirt shape in 1916. Delineator had a great article about it and they had like a pattern on how to make your own and how they were like tying them at the sides to make them flat in the front, flat in the back because they were little panniers because like 1916 was like obsessed with historicism. I'm like, no wonder I love 1916 because they're doing 1830s hair, it's amazing. One of the suggestions for making these hooped petticoats was to make it out of bobbinet. And so when we were walking around the village antique mall, I saw this 1940s wedding dress, which I don't give a <laughs> about wedding dresses, guys, but she had this perfect little bobbinet hoop and I'm just obsessed with it. And it looks just like the ones that I was seeing in Delineator. The brand is called Hoops, my dear. I think I did it again. It's really kind of crispy feeling, so it's stiff, but like, look at that shape, that's great. She fits, <laughs> she's cute, she's so cute. So she's a little bit like flatter in the front and a little wider at the sides. So this is not bad. I think we can make this work for 1916. I think this will work for 1916, so I'm very excited about it. Come here. So these are kind of the three really cool finds. I don't know how old this trunk is, but she old. I'm getting 1840s vibes for some reason, uh, maybe a bit earlier. She has actually wood handles and it's wood here and then it's this is papered. These nails are hand done. They are not mechanically industrial process nails. The latches are also really intricate. They fit really nicely. Obviously she's been around the block for a while, but her components work great. See that nail? That's That looks hand, hand forged to me. She's not the nicest, but I really liked the wallpaper design on her. I thought she was a really cute size too. So this Victorian little settee with her original upholstery, she's painted. She has been like glued back together. She kind of came undone. Her caning's in great condition. Like. Her, her cane bottom is fantastic. Again, it's kind of giving maybe like 1840s, 1860s vibes, but she's got really great cane bottom. She was like pinky reddish velvet. My personal favorite find was actually a, originally I thought it was 1917, but looking at the skirt a little bit more closely, I think she might be more 1918 to 1919, but a complete women's suit with some decent provenance to it. The woman I bought it to, her name is Betsy. Her mom was an antique clothing collector and her mom had this suit in her closet. So there's a chance that this suit might have been her grandmother's. We're not 100% sure. It's in actually really great condition because guys, look at this lining. Look at the lining. It's gorgeous. Also, it does have a label. It's from a department store in Chicago, and you can actually find a lot of the Chicago catalogs from this company. But she's she's a little like dusty with like cat hair and stuff. But this lining is just fantastic, and she has like little sweat pads. The buttons in the trim, that midi braid, is the trim, and there's these great details on it. These cuffs of the sleeve are actually angular, so they cut across the hand. We got some asymmetricality like here with how it hangs, cute little pockets, the shawl collar, the front buttons. So for the 1916, like 19 teens wardrobe, I'm gonna be pulling a lot of, I think, design inspiration and trim inspiration from this jacket because I think for a suit coat, it's just lovely. Very simple skirt, it's not super full. It does have coat hangers on it. She has her belt, but what's super cute about it is it has these little, see the little pockets? Snaps up the side, unlined. It has the belting in it. It's not super wide, no bony. Very, very simple construction, but it's a great little suit. Loved it. The other thing that I love about it, 30, 31 inch waist. So she's also not super teeny, which, you know, we love here. We love to see it. Not bad overall. I'm pretty happy with it. Technically, almost everything on my list I was able to find. I got a lot of sewing to do for this 19 teens project. So with that, I'm gonna let you guys go and get back to sewing. Thanks for coming with me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Obviously, we've never done anything quite like this before. If you enjoyed it, uh, this sort of content, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. So that way I can know whether or not I should bring you guys along with me next time. I post every other Sunday and I'll see you guys back here next time. Bye.
And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And thanks again to Likewise for sponsoring this video. And I'll see you guys back here next time with another one. Bye. Smash that like button. <laughs> I love you so much. You're so pretty. Can you not lick that? I don't think that's the ASMR that people are into. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Yes, I love you so, so much. Can you go away? Go away, go away, go away.